Mr. Beat presents Presidential, presidential Elections in American, American History. History. The 22nd presidential election in American history took place on November 5th, 1872. It was the first election in which every state used a popular vote to determine its electors. Therefore, it felt like more of a democracy. For the most part, Ulysses Grant remained popular during his first term as president, especially with the majority of Republicans. He got his party's renomination. However, some Republicans did not like him so much. For one thing, they didn't like how Grant had a lot of friends in his cabinet and ignored merit. A lot of his friends, as it would turn out, were a bit corrupt. As a matter of fact, Vice President Schuyler Colfax was tied to the Credit Mobilier of America scandal in which many politicians were bribed for actions favorable to the railroad company Union Pacific. It would be just one of several scandals tied to the Grant administration. After Colfax was implicated, the Republican Party decided it might not be such a good idea to re-nominate him, so they nominated Henry Wilson, the senator from Massachusetts, to be Grant's running mate instead. Still, some Republicans, like Charles Sumner, weren't satisfied. Sumner was sick of the favoritism Grant showed to friends and family, calling it, quote, Grantism. Some influential Republicans refused to support him and actually started a new political party called the Liberal Republican Party. Those dang liberal Republicans. They nominated Horace Greeley, a former representative from New York and a well-known editor for the New York Tribune, for president. A journalist running for president? Crazy! They nominated Benjamin Gratz Brown, the governor of Missouri, as his running mate. Now here's something interesting, a fusion or cross-endorsement nomination. The Democratic Party also decided to nominate Horace Greeley for president and Benjamin Gratz Brown for vice president. They even adopted the liberal Republican platform showing that they were cool with reconstruction policies. Really though, the main reason why they decided to go with the liberal Republican nominees is because they wanted to take down Grant and knew by nominating different people, it would just split his opposition. How about some third parties? Well, there were at least three new ones. The Labor Reform Party tried to nominate a couple fellows, lawyer Charles O'Connor from New York and Supreme Court Justice David Davis, awesome name, from Illinois, but things just didn't work out. It was kind of doomed from the start. Meanwhile, there was the Prohibition Party, which was formed to oppose the consumption and sale of alcohol. James Black, who founded the party and was a big temperance activist, duh, was their first nominee for president. John Russell, another founder of the party, was his running mate. By far the most interesting third party that ran for president in 1872, and maybe in American history, was the Equal Rights Party. The National Women's Suffrage Association had supported a woman named Victoria Woodhull, an activist who publicly talked trash about the government only being made up of men. Despite the fact that women all across the country could not vote, well, except in sparsely populated Wyoming territory, Woodhull became the first woman to be nominated for president in American history. Frederick Douglass was nominated as her running mate, but he never acknowledged the nomination. Woodhull had little money and borrowed money from supporters for her campaign, usually not able to pay them back. Where are super PACs when you need them, eh? So yeah, just let that sink in for a moment. In 1872, a woman ran for president with an African American as her running mate. The two front runners, Grant and Greeley, were aggressively attacked. Grant for the corruption in his cabinet, and Greeley for being an eccentric guy for his support of spiritualism, aka communicating with the dead, vegetarianism, prohibition, and socialism, all radical ideas at the time. Greeley had a rough campaign and had the misfortune of a long history of positions published in his newspaper that opponents could just nitpick. Even his own supporters were disappointed with him. On top of that, his wife died right before the election. And here are the results. Ulysses Grant easily won re-election, receiving 286 electoral votes and 55.6% of the popular vote. Horace Greeley received 43.8% of the popular vote, but, um, he died. 
Yeah, before the Electoral College could meet, he died. He would have received 66 electoral votes, but now those votes couldn't go to him, obviously, though three electors tried. Most of the remaining electoral votes then shifted to Thomas Hendricks, the former senator from Indiana. All the other presidential candidates received less than 1% of the popular vote. Henry Wilson became the 18th vice president in American history. This presidential election remains the only one in which a candidate died during the electoral process. I'll see you for the next election, buddy.